Mm-hmm. I'd only been out the county about four days when it hit me. My last bowel movement was during the prayer circle just before trial. A few of us used to gather around in the day room, hold hands, bow our heads, and say a prayer for the nigga on deck. Good thing everybody had their eyes closed because this was one of them shits that would blur your vision and make a nigga tear up like the end of a Scarface. I had to sit there till the sermon was over because I didn't want to pull my hand loose and break the prayer circle just to wipe my ass. Thought Jesus might take it as disrespect. So I'm four days fresh out the county with nightstick dick, constipated, and I ain't slept a wink. Nigga got insomnia. I figured it was my bed. I needed to sleep on something firm like my cell bunk. So I called my homie upgrade. This nigga always got his hands into something. One time he stole a square out my cell, and they wanted to pay me for it. We ended up going to blows in the shower, and the guard didn't want to break it up because he knew I was going to rub these nuts on him. I knocked upgrade, smoothed the fuck out, and a couple of the inmates instantly got the soap in their dicks. But I looked out for him, threw some water in his face, and woke them up before they could slide up in him. Me and Upgrade been cool ever since. He told me that if I was ever on the outside and needed a favor, I should give him a call, so I did. I told him I needed a mattress. He said, why? I said, because it's none of your fucking business. He told me where to meet him. Don't ask me how. But this nigga had six anti-flammable prison issue bunks still in the plastic balanced on his head. Walking across a highway overpass pushing a grocery cart full of pit bull puppies. But the nigga kept his promise and he hooked me up. I got one of them mattresses, man. Took it back to my mama house. Plopped it on the floor with some stationery I stole from the courthouse. A six-piece chicken McNugget and some spicy buffalo wing sauce. A couple naked pictures of my uncle's girl. Some napkins and ketchup for lubricant. Tried to squeeze one off to my uncle's bitch, but the flash in the photo, man, was glimmering off her stretch marks. Made her look like a human walnut. So I got my nephew's computer. Got to looking for some porn on that. Spent about an hour surfing through that fake fuck bullshit. Bunch of noise and toys. I hate that shit. If your dick is smaller than mine, the moaning is probably fake. But I came up on this one video that had all the right elements. Woo! Blew a gusher to that motherfucker. Damn near needed a new mattress. I ate my McNuggets and got woozy from the itis. I reached for my drink and noticed lipstick on the straw and it was half empty. I was like, hold up, this can't be my shit. I took my ass right back to McDonald's. The barista gon' come out from behind the counter trying to be hard. I gave that motherfucker some Popeyes. Two peaks and a dirty rice, heard me? But it ain't phasing. Nigga, I got the dancing and weaving on him. Fixing to smother that ass with mashed potato and gravy, but the manager must have called the police on me. I heard him pull up in the drive through Whoop! I bust out the front door. Nigga, this is my hood. I know all the shortcuts. Went sea biscuit on their ass. Got to dipping on him and cutting. I was breathing heavy, but I knew they was in trouble when they turned on their sirens. Because them jump out boys like to roll incognito. Not today. And I damn near got away from them, but my flip-flop came off on a sharp turn, and I ain't had no brakes on my bicycle. So I took my foot and stuck it in the tire. You know how you do to slow the bike down. Well, I stuck it in there and my damn big toe got caught and broke the fuck off, man. And it's just flapping in the spoke like a goddamn baseball card. And I'm hauling ass trying to get the fuck out the way. But when I saw all that blood on my foot, man, I just passed out. I rolled into a gator farm. And then baby gator got me. Pow! That, that's how I got all these scratches on my shoulder. But the shit woke me up and I socked him. The daddy gator got swole and tried to roll on me, nigga, but I'm quick on one foot. I got the hopscotching on the backs of these gators, man. I see why they make good shoes, because they got good traction. One time, ain't even at the draw down on me, nigga. I hopped the fence, got in the back of the police car, locked the door, and was like, hey, get me to a hospital. Nigga need a tuberculosis shot. Let's go, niggas. I see you. Put the siren on. A nigga fixing to die. Now, y'all probably sitting there going, wait a minute, wait a minute. This sounds familiar, and I don't really see the point to this fucking story. Well, it's two points, and you need to know them. Point number one is fast food to kill you. Point number two, on any given day, I would have shook them popos. I did it too many times before. What happened on that day? i tell you what happened. I was eating that bullshit, got the itis, and lost my competitive edge. That's why when I hit the barista with that Popeye's two-piece dirty rice, that dyke bitch ain't even blank. I was weak, should have never left my fucking house. It was game time, but I wasn't ready, not even close. That's why the world competitors that we idolize go to camp and train for the upcoming season. 
That's why they seek refuge to focus and prepare for the next bout. That's why the boxers go away to wean themselves off that queef hog. Ramen noodle, hot wings, Oreos, Jack in the Box, what have you. They search for the best trainers, the best food, the best equipment, the best camps. Just like I search for the best mattress, the best porno, and then I go and eat the quickest shit I can find. Look, man, when it's game time, the playing stops. So I ask you this. How can you compete on a world-class level without world-class preparation? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tijuana Jackson. Welcome to another episode of Prison Logic.